chefs of reddit what's one rule of cooking amateurs need to know late af but you're just going to enjoy cooking more if you have a sharp knife no clue how people can hack away at veggies and meat no reason to go insane either a 30 dollar victorinox and 5 dollars sharpener will get you a very long way one of the best knives i have is a basic cooking knife from ikea that thing is super sharp and keeps its edge forever. I've had it since 8 years or so and only had to sharpen it a handful of times. Smell is very similar to taste, and if you're not sure about combining various spices, open the bottles and smell them all together. Have a friend that lost his smell from covid, and now he only recognizes if food is salty, sweet, sour or bitter. Salt, pepper and acid will brighten up almost any dish. If an otherwise wonderful dish is just, missing something, add salt, pepper and lemon juice, then reassess. There's a book called Salt Fat Acid Heat that comes highly recommended to amateur cooks. A lot of the time when people add salt to a dish because they think it tastes flat, what it really needs is an acid like lemon juice or vinegar. Learn how to properly store raw ingredients in a fridge, raw chicken on bottom, understand times and temps. It's possible to stack times and ingredients so that your food is done at the same time. Drink heavily and get a nectar too of a pig or tomato, or no one will take you seriously. I find it so odd after working in the industry that every personal fridge I've ever come across prevents home cooks from following this logic raw chicken at the bottom. By putting the crisper at the dead bottom with no way to put it on a higher shelf. Preheat your pan, it's a simple trick but it will improve your cooking. A small amount of oil will go a long long way. When you take steak or pork or lamb off of the heat or out of the oven, always give it time to rest, usually half the amount of time you cooked them, and I tend to loosely cover them in tin foil. I got really nice stainless steel pans for Christmas this past December. I've learned how important it is to preheat these pans. I do the water trick. Toss water in the pan and it will form a bead of water that glides around the pan, each time. Has made cooking a lot easier. Don't choose this as a career if you want a social life. I've seen so many talented people drop the job because they don't get to spend time with their friends and family. People plan gatherings and parties at the times restaurants are busiest, so you could end up cooking for the people you know but not getting to interact with them. Friends of over 10 years still don't get this part of kitchen life. Always missing non-work friends events. Work is your social life. This is one of the things about the industry I both love and hate. If you're using a steel hone on a blade, always run the blade through a folded up paper towel a few times afterwards. If you don't, there are small steel particles that cling to the blade that can and will come off in the next thing you cut. Really think about what size you're cutting your vegetables in relation to cook time. It's better to have a perfectly cooked larger vegetable that you have to use fork and knife a bit to eat at a table than a bunch of overcooked, mushy bite sized pieces. Generally speaking, the best simple preparation of cooking a vegetable is usually roasted on a sheet pan with olive oil, S&P, and for god's sakes, make your own salad dressings fresh. It takes no time, you likely have what you already need in your pantry and it tastes 10x as good as the crap in the bottle. You'll be surprised even how much better ranch dressing tastes if you get the dry seasoning packets and mix it with some fresh milk and mayo and let it set for 30 minutes in the refrigerator. Roasted vegetables are great, I used to hate them, and my problem was I wasn't roasting them long enough. They'd either be hardened and cooked or mushy. The key for me was to cook them past the mushiness stage to get them to where a lot of moisture is out of them and they have browned a bit, or more. Patience, planning, and good organization. Patience planning. Brine your chicken. Let the rice dry before you make fried rice. Slow cook your meats. Overall the actual time you invest is about the same but it requires some foresight. Don't expect to just grab a chicken breast out of the freezer and be able to make a delicious meal in 20 minutes. A lot of the best dishes take some time to let the flavors do their work. Organization. It's a lot more enjoyable when you can focus on cooking instead of digging around for things you need or clearing space on your counter. Have a good set of glass Tupperware to save leftovers. Get stackable matching cookware that's easy to manage and store. Ziploc bags are great too. These things pay for themselves in giving you general sanity and making it more likely you will consume your leftovers and always have things in their place.
I just want to reiterate, brine chicken. I made fried chicken the other day, and the recipe called for brining it. It was so much juicier and flavorful than normal, even though the meat itself wasn't that good quality. Keep it simple. I see so many young chefs coming into the kitchen fresh out of the classroom going heck for leather to make some strange gels, jellies, dehydrated this and that. Yes it can taste great, but just chill out. Show me if you can make a proper juss, properly cook a joint of meat, know how to bring the best out of a simple, humble vegetable. Just keep it simple. P.S. Salt, acid, fat, in the right balance can go a fucking long way. P.P.S. Watch out for that freaking mandolin. It will take no prisoners. R.I.P.P. Rest in peace pinky. Clean as you go. Done with the cutting board? Wash it or put it away before you move on to the next step. A clean kitchen makes your life way easier. Not a chef but I'm having a beer with one. I posed this question to him and he said, you know the knob on the stove that makes the fire come out, there's a whole range of settings between off and all the way on. Temperature control, grabs my shoulder temperature, control. I've had the great fortune of knowing some pro cooks in my life, and the most memorable piece of advice I've gotten was when there were several of them at my place during a housewarming and they had, of course, taken over the kitchen. One was searing a pork loin and was pissy because I had a liquor dispenser top on my olive oil and just a grinder for salt. No pig. After he ripped the top off the oil and found my box of kosher salt, he explained. Dirtamic. Do you know why restaurant food tastes so good he asked, while liberally dumping oil and salt on the pork. It's because we cook like we hate you. Turns out the best home cooking aid is self-loathing. Yep. Butter on everything. If you put a lot of effort into making a meal for your loved ones and something doesn't come out the way you hoped for, don't be and complain and apologize for it when everyone is eating. Otherwise a crappy dish turns into a crappy experience for all. Don't freaking ruin your pans for Christ's sake. I've seen so many instances of people talking about how non-stick doesn't work. It goes away a week after you buy the pans when in reality they are treating the things like cast iron and using every metal utensil they can find on it. That said, non-stick pans don't last forever, no matter how careful you are. For this reason it's probably not worth buying a very expensive one, but don't go for the cheapest option either. Not a prof chef mashed potatoes. Not blended potatoes. Don't ever put potatoes in the blender. It will turn into glue. For anyone wondering the science behind it, potatoes contain a lot of starch. Mashing cooked potatoes gently by hand or with a rice leaves most of the starch molecules intact. The butter and dairy you add to the mashed potatoes are able to coat each individual particle, making the potatoes creamy. I didn't know people did this. I just used a fork until I had a proper potato masher. Not a chef but worked as a dishwasher. Do not try to put out burning oil with water. Try to cover the pan so the fire loses oxygen. If crap does get out of hand, use baking soda to put the fire out. I'm not going to be able to hold myself to one rule. Sorry not sorry, mise en place. It's French for putting in place or something like that. It means before you start the actual cooking. Get everything you'll need for the whole recipe out on the counter. Do all your prep work, measuring amounts, chopping onions, peeling potatoes, seasoning meat, greasing pans, whatever the recipe says, and put it all within arm's reach of where you'll be cooking. As you become more experienced, you'll get a feel for what can wait to be done during downtime mid-cooking. But even then mise is just less of a hassle. Don't rely on a single recipe. If you want to try to make something you had at a restaurant and google chicken a la whatever, don't just randomly pick one of the results to try. Read a few of them and cook the one that comes closest to being the average of all the others. Way too many internet recipes aren't actually tested by their authors, and professionals are actually worse than amateurs about it. They're used to eyeballing measurements because they know what the right amount looks like and when they write it down it's all guesswork. Fat, salt, sour, bitter, if it's bland, add some fat, if it's still bland, add some salt, if it's still bland, add some vinegar or lemon juice, 
if it's still bland. Add some herbs and spices or green vegetables. This is even something you can do late in the cooking process to fix a recipe that's turning out boring. Just remember that a little goes a long way. Also there are magic ingredients that combine several of these at once. For example, olive oil is very fatty and slightly bitter, cheese is very fatty, moderately salty, and slightly sour, soy sauce is very salty and slightly bitter, citrus zest is very bittery 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 bitter measure by weight, not volume. This is more for baking than cooking. Baking is very sensitive to small changes in the ratio of different ingredients, and you'll have a lot easier time getting it right if you use a scale. Flour is especially problematic. If you scoop up a cup of freshly sifted flour and level it off, so you have exactly a cup, then spend a couple of minutes lightly tapping it on the countertop and shaking it from side to side, it'll settle and pack more tightly and the exact same amount of flour will only take up 3 quarters of a cup. But don't play that game, just weigh it and be done. If a recipe says 1 cup of flour, use 130 grams. Bonus. Weighing stuff means you don't have to wash a bunch of funny shaped measuring cups and spoons. The herbs thing. As a very very amateur cook I started just randomly throwing an assessment of herbs into my tomato sauce and suddenly it tasted a million times better. You don't need to buy pre-made spice rubs. Look at the ingredients and build a well stocked pantry. Celebrity endorsed cookware isn't always good. A lot of it sucks. Don't cheap out on knives. Buy forged not stamped. Store raw meat accordingly. Don't cross contaminate your fridge. Knife magnet strips are better than knife blocks. This is obvious, but never put a cast iron in the dishwasher. Don't boil the crap out of potatoes to make mash. Rinse raw rice before cooking. Mise and place. Celebrity chefs make more money being celebrities than they do being chefs of the 23 franchise restaurants they own. Former executives use chef for a 3 star restaurant. I have also ran a bunch smaller kitchens during covid. 1. Get good knives. I recommend Mercer Renaissance as a starter brand. $40 for the 8 inch chef's knives, $23 for the 5 inch utility knife. 2. Shallots are used extremely often in restaurant kitchens but rarely at home. Use as a substitute for onions for a more mild taste. 3. Heat pans for 1 minute before using. Use less heat when cooking. Rarely will you ever need to go higher than 75%. 4. Taste everything possible. Not just your finished product. Taste the spices. Salt, pepper, etc all separately before adding them the first time you use it. A lot of people will buy a new spice then immediately add it to their food ruining it. 5. Knives should be lightly honed before and after each use. Hand wash and dry immediately. 6. Never attempt to catch anything that's falling. Not just knives. If you drop a napkin your instinctive response should be to take a step back and put your hands up and out of the way. 7. Want to make something more like a restaurant? Odds are you need more salt, sugar, or butter. We don't care if the carrot we serve are worse than eating actual candy. We just want you to come back. 8. Just because you like cooking doesn't mean you will like working at a restaurant. Pay is usually pretty poor unless you work at Michelin star restaurants and it is a hot, high pressure environment. We lose a lot of people who couldn't handle the pressure of getting yelled at. New to Reddit. BF signed me up thinking I might like it. Sorry of I don't respond. When a dish calls for a certain amount of wine, it is recommended to consume an equal amount of wine whilst cooking said dish. I'm gonna make beef bourguignon for the whole extended family and get crap faced in the process then. E I don't speak French. When cooking for others just make it how you would like it, chances are they all like it. You're probably not great at making food you dislike. Keep your kitchen organized, your workspace clean, and mise and place everything before you get started. You don't want to get halfway into a recipe and not be able to find, or worse, find out you don't have or have enough of a certain ingredient no one want their steak on a cast iron just cooking away getting overdone and tough while they're searching for rosemary good prep makes great food tie your hair i've watched so many people cook and half the time they have their hair loose just flying wherever it chooses god no just tie it please Make your own vinaigrettes, 
it's easy, substantially cheaper, and tastes absolutely infinitely better and fresher than store-bought dressing. I haven't bought dressing in years. There are a million and one different ways to make a vinaigrette, and you'll figure out the exact ratios you like. I like a nice acidy vinaigrette. So here's what I do. 2 tablespoons neutral oil. 1 tablespoon olive oil. 3 tablespoons white wine vinegar. 1 tablespoon Dijon mustard. 1 tablespoon honey. Optional squeeze of lemon of it's around. A nice pinch of herbs de Provence whatever combination of tasty herbs you like. Salt and pepper to finish. Whisk the absolute crap out of it, like really whisk it and get it all emulsified. You wanna whip it hard for a good few minutes, that's what she said. This is basically enough for one large bowl of salad. Four servings, but you can scale it up and save it in containers in your fridge for weeks. There's a million things you can do with a base recipe like this. You can add some berry puree to make a berry vinaigrette. Replace the white vinegar with balsamic or apple cider. Add a little grated palm for an Italian take. Anything you can think of, you can try it. Something that I found is easier than whipping. Put your vinegar, oil, etc. into a jar instead. Put the lid on and shake it real hard for like 30 seconds. Voila. Toasting dry spices in a salty pan can really bring out the flavor of the spices. Don't put BBQ sauce on until the end of cooking meat. The sugar in the BBQ sauce can cause the meat to burn and char. I have a recipe I use for Indian butter chicken. It calls for blooming the spices in the pan for 60 seconds before adding the liquid ingredients. Love that description. Not a chef, but a very experienced home cook. Sharpen your knives. They will be more efficient and a dull knife is more dangerous than a sharp one. The difference in efficiency is astounding. Seriously, a mildly dull knife can immediately turn a tomato into a finger slicing hazard. Taste everything. For reals. Everything. I tell my cooks to do this because you start building up a database in your head of flavors. I will legit taste raw garlic, turmeric, horseradish, rice wine vinegar, fish sauce, cumin, etc, as well as all my cooked dishes. That way I know how to fix dishes or know exactly what to add to it to make it complete. You should also study cuisines. Don't know how to make something Thai? Well of you study the culture you would know that they use coconut milk, turmeric, lemongrass, kefir lime etc. Don't know traditional Mexican food? Well they usually use chili peppers, a wide variety, corn, chocolate, almonds, cilantro, tomatoes, etc. You can use these ingredients to make something inspired by those cuisines. It also makes you more knowledgeable about food and where it comes from. Does a savory dish lack something, but the salt levels are okay? Try adding something sweet or and acidic. A splash of apple juice can go a long way in a stew or a bit of honey in your chili could blow your mind. Does it lack depth? Fish sauce. If all else fails, a splash of Tabasco. Conversely if a sweet dish needs that extra oomph, try a pinch of salt. And when it comes to flavoring, but the good stuff, powdered sugar with vanillin can't compare to real vanilla pod for example. And if you're just using the seeds, don't throw the pod away. Stuff it in a jar or Tupperware with sugar in it, or a jar of syrup. One basic thing is get good with your knife work. It can really help your efficiency and if you learn properly you will be 100% safer. Also sharpen your knives, or try and pick the sharpest knife in the place lol. Most foods, especially stuff you eat often, is not complicated in terms of steps or ingredients, and every dish can be tweaked with what you have. It may technically be another dish, but the gist is there. So don't sweat specifics, but learn the general fat salt acid, herbal, umami, spicy balances and you can make anything. And Wait for the pan to get hot before adding ingredients. Less sticking to pan, and a better cook overall. I cry inside every time I watch my wife place something in a pan and there's no KKSSSSSSSSSSS immediately. Stop cooking with extra virgin olive oil. It is not some better version of olive oil. Extra virgin has an extremely low smoke point, so cooking with it often leads to burned food and a smoky kitchen. It is intended for dressing and garnishing. Regular olive oil has a much higher smoke point and is meant for cooking. They are not the same. I am not a chef, but have cooked for a living for many years. 
You can learn to cook better by simply making food. Even if you are following a recipe you can and will get to know food over time. Cooking is an art and science, but is also not hard unless you are making complex things. I might rue this, but I share a secret of mine. Mac and cheese. Literally take a craft box, cook the noodles, add a whole lot of cream cheese and the cheese pack it comes with. It is significantly better than milk could ever hope to make it. Add things that you think might be good for that recipe and take note of what it does to the taste. You can take exact measurements, but I don't. Scissors are a very important kitchen tool. Get a good pair and you'll save a lot of time. Also, if you live with a chef and every meal they cook isn't restaurant quality, it's because they aren't trying to make you fat. A lot of butter, oil and and salt goes into restaurant meals. That's what makes most of them so delicious. Most of it is seasoning, yes, skill and doing it well. But if you put that much oil, butter and salt into your food at home you'll be like, you. That's why it's so tasty. But you can't eat that every day lol. Appreciate your meals out. Know the smoke point of your oil. If your oil is smoking, it creates a bitter taste and releases carcinogenic compounds that are harmful to your health when inhaled. Have a high smoke point oil, like avocado or peanut oil, on hand for recipes that require high heat. Extra virgin olive oil may be great in salad dressings, but it will smoke you out if you use it to fry a piece of meat. Never crowd your pan when you are frying searing stuff. If stuff is too close to each other they can just end up steaming and you won't get a crispy finish. Generally speaking, vegetables grown above ground, peas, broccoli, etc. should be placed in already boiling water. If it's grown underground, potatoes, carrots, etc. you should put it in cold water and bring up to boil. Not a chef but I learned a few months ago that instead of frying an egg on high heat and flipping it several times, you can just fry it on low heat with a lid. It'll cook both sides of the egg without you having to flip it. Now I can be lazy while frying eggs. I was taught that over easy was a flipped lightly fried egg and sunny side up was a non-flipped lightly fried egg cooked with a lid. I choose my method based on desired play presentation. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.